Hello, dear friends, I'm with you. Less than six months have passed, and your Maroon Yashka continues her story about Mod Holly Moon. And this time, we will look at the version of the Mod 4 Minecraft 1710. Unlike the Mod version 4 112 2, we have a training book available to us, which undoubtedly pleases. It falls into our hands as soon as we start playing. But if you've lost it somewhere, it's okay, it's very easy to craft. We need to put together a simple book and an aconite flower in this way. However, the book is in English, so if you do not know English, you will have to sit with a dictionary or just watch my video to the end. When we open the mod tab, we immediately see the difference from the version 4 Minecraft 1.12.2. There are completely different items and completely different summoning eggs. We'll talk about the items a little later, but first let's look at the summoning eggs. As you can see, there are no hunters among them. And indeed, in this version of the mod, you will not be hunted, at least when you play as a beast. But there are three types of werewolves at once, or rather two types of werewolves and dire wolves. There are such residents werewolves, they take human form during the day, and at night, they walk around in animal form. They do not live in villages, but in forest houses. These houses can look different. Sometimes they are littered with foliage from above, and sometimes they are located under fallen trees. These houses and lairs are found in various biomes, and, depending on the biome and the wood from which they are made, their inhabitants may belong to an oak, dark, birch, or taiga flock. Perhaps there are some other packs, but alas, I have not yet met them, although I have conscientiously plowed the map in search of steppe and northern wolves, and these werewolf residents can trade with you but at first they will sell you all sorts of nonsense. You will be able to get more interesting items only after you have achieved their location. And you can achieve the location by feeding them with different meat. If you have won the favor of one member of the pack, then you will automatically be accepted by all other members of it, as well as spoiling relations with one. You spoil relations with all, but this does not apply to other packs. That is, if you quarreled with the birch trees, it will not affect the taiga and all the others in any way. By the way, if you haven't guessed yet, then you can spoil the relationship by hitting or killing one of the werewolf residents. Initially, werewolves residents do not aggro at you either day or night, but if you hit a resident, even in the light of day, he will immediately turn into a beast and pounce on you, and at the same time infect you with a wolf infection. But this does not apply to the game in peaceful mode. In addition to the inhabitants, we also have dire wolves and just werewolves. Everyone and others are capable of infecting. And here is a huge difference from the fashion for the 12th version. Both of them can be tamed by making members of their pack. You won't make werewolf residents members of your pack because they already have their own party there. How do we tame the werewolves? To do this, we first of all have to become werewolves ourselves, that is, catch the infection. In this regard, there is no difference from the fashion for the 12th version. You should be bitten, unless two types of carriers of infection are added. Dire wolves and werewolves are residents. You will turn after the bite on the next full moon. The fact that the transformation is coming, you will understand by the attacks rolling over you. They will begin on the day before the full moon. You will feel something like a pulsation. A red veil will cover your eyes, but these attacks pass quickly. At night, you will turn into a beast and will not be able to sleep. Now you are a werewolf. And, in theory, you can contact your own kind and put together your own pack. However, we will tame werewolves a little later. But first let's figure out what opportunities we are given in general. As in the mod version 4 1 12 2, after the transformation, you will be able to open the werewolf menu. It is called by default by English K, Russian L. But the menu itself is somewhat different from the one that we have already considered. There are five tabs here. The first of which, with a little book, gives us general information about us. At the moment, we are a werewolf. Our status is a beast. Our wildness is 5,000 units. I'll tell you what it means later. Then, there is our hunger scale. And this scale does not duplicate our usual hunger. It is a special hunger inherent only in werewolves. About it to a little later. And then, we still have the opportunity to choose whether we will see the scale of animal hunger only when we are in the form of a werewolf all the time, or does it bother us 
and we don't want to see it at all. It doesn't bother me. I want to see it always. So let's install it like this. The second tab with a foot controls our skills. And that's where we have a serious difference from the version of the Mod 4 Minecraft 1.12.2. As soon as you become a werewolf, you immediately get a more powerful jump and faster running and predator vision along with night vision and the ability to howl and the ability to keep your paws empty. There is no need to pump in any performance points anywhere. There is no need to jump into the werewolf dimension either. And there is no one here, this dimension. All features are available to you by default and they are enhanced and new ones are added as you develop. But about this again a little later. To turn the ability on and off, you just need to click on its icon. Just like in the 1.12.2 version, you can assign two abilities to hotkeys. I'll probably assign a howl and a vision mode. The third tab with the wolf's head allows us to choose our animal form. As you can see, there are a little more textures here than for 1.12.2. There is even such an interesting red wolf. The fourth tab contains the data of your pack, its name, your status in the pack, the number of pack members, and the number of players in the pack. In this case, you are alone. And there is also an option to enable or disable hitting on your own. I personally found this feature very useful. The last fifth tab is designed for the most part for multiplayer. Here you can change the name of your pack, invite another player to join your pack, or exclude someone from it. You can also join someone's pack yourself. So, the management and abilities are more or less sorted out. What should we do next? Now we can try to create our own pack. The training book tells us that werewolves are strong, ferocious creatures that manifest their essence on full moods. Apparently, Werewolves really spawn only on full moons. At least, they don't appear often. The same applies to the fierce wolves. They spawn in various forests, sometimes on plains, and each of them has its own behavioral characteristics, which we will soon consider. To tame the werewolf Lilith Wolf, we need to first take the form of a beast. Then you need to set a howl on one of the hot keys and select the mode when the howl serves to attract wild wolves. Here, be careful. You have two howling icons, one with the moon, the second with a heart. We don't touch the moon yet. We look at the one with a heart. She switches the mode of the summoning howl. If the heart is burning red, then this is the mode of summoning your own. If the icon is black at all, then my summoning is turned off completely. We need the wolf's head to be circled in yellow. This is the wild wolf summoning mode. Now we take with us meat, and preferably more different varieties, and go to look for wild werewolves or fierce wolves. And here we got a werewolf. First, we click on it with our hand without food, and right-click the mouse to make sure that it is not a werewolf resident. If the trading inventory has opened, then we are looking for another one. If the trading inventory has not opened, then everything is fine. This is a wild werewolf, and that's what we need. By the way, dire wolves are all wild, and all are available for taming. We press the howl key, we hear the howl, and immediately start feeding the beast with meat with the right mouse button. You have only 10 seconds to bait. If you did not have time during this period, you can try again, but the previous portion of meat Consider it wasted. The amount of meat fed can be different. In addition, it may turn out that this individual is tamed, not by any meat, but by some specific one. If you tried one type of meat and it didn't help, try another. If the beast still does not tame, then it may well turn out that its level significantly exceeds yours. If you are weaker than the tamed beast by at least three levels, then taming will not work. In addition, if the level of a wolf or werewolf tamed by you is higher than yours, there is a risk that he will break out of submission and go wild again. When the beast is tamed, hearts will follow it, and the dire wolf's eyes will turn from red to yellow, and you will be able to open the interface of your new friend again with the right mouse button. As you can see, the werewolf has two tabs, 
the first of which gives us general information about our new comrade. It says here that he is a werewolf. In the case of a dire wolf, it will be written dire wolf. Then it shows how hungry he is. By the way, the responsibility for feeding the members of the pack will now lie with you. If the dire wolves and werewolves get very angry, they will start killing neutral mobs, such as chickens, cows, and so on, and can cause serious damage to your farm. The level of wildness and health is indicated under the hunger scale. Werewolves dire wolves heal, by the way, with the help of meat. So if they were hacked in battle, hurry up to feed your friends. Well, at the very bottom, their belonging to one or another pack is registered. In this case, this werewolf belongs to my pack. And there is also a button that switches the mode of following and wandering. By default, your tamed pack members will follow you and teleport like dogs if they fall behind. But you can leave them somewhere by turning on the wandering mode. In the second tab, there is already more detailed information, including the preferences of this werewolf and all his inclinations. For example, it is prescribed which creatures he will attack. It can be residents, animals, monsters, players, and so on. Some people hate water or fire, or maybe both. This manifests itself as follows. If the werewolves get caught in a fire and catch fire there, they will still follow you wherever you go. But the one who has a fear of fire will rush around in a panic and risks getting lost or even burning down. With hydrophobia, it's somewhat different. If you attack a mob and it starts to run away through the water, then your pack will rush after it. Everyone, except those who are afraid of water, they will trample on the shore and avoid the need to wet their paws to the last. However, sooner or later, they will still get into the water, especially after you, their leader. But, I repeat, they will be the last to try to swim. Some werewolves like to break down doors. Such people will break them at every opportunity, even if it is the door of your house. This can be used in raids, for example, on a village, if you decide to get rid of all the inhabitants living there. Someone likes a certain kind of miasco or cake. Lovers of sweets will eat up the laid out cakes and thereby be saturated. Keeping a flock of cake lovers can be convenient in the sense that they will feed themselves and you do not need to monitor their hunger scale. Some are able to jump on the target, someone is inclined to obey, and some, on the contrary, are alpha by nature. Someone likes walls and someone likes music. For example, these two guys who are staring at the record player are music lovers and are currently listening to music. In general, as you understand, all these NPC werewolves, dire wolves, are very peculiar characters. I forgot to mention that in this tab of werewolves, there is still such a black heart at the bottom here. Why it is needed is not written anywhere, but I suspect that it is directly related to the predilections of werewolves and wolves. It seems to me that with the time spent in your pack, this heart should somehow fill up, like in some animals and mods, where the main feature is domestication. For example, if werewolves eat their favorite food, listen to music or do what they love, then they become more attached to you. I was busy with this for quite a long time, but I never found confirmation of my theory, despite all its logic. Perhaps this functionality simply did not have time to finalize. Well, to distinguish your pack members, you may well use tags on them. This way, it will be easier for you to determine which of them is afraid of fire and will stay to guard the house, and who is not afraid of anything and will go camping with you. In order to keep higher-level beasts under control, we ourselves need to become stronger. How strong we are as a werewolf is shown by the very scale of savagery that I mentioned a little earlier. There are five stages of savagery in total, that is, five degrees of how much the animal essence takes possession of us. The more savagery, the stronger we become, but this does not pass without a trace. Because each degree of savagery has its pros and cons. Savagery has its main effects. The higher it is, the stronger these effects are. The main ones include natural armor, wolf paws, and hunger. Natural armor means that you take less damage, however, if you wear armor, it will make it difficult for you to jump. 
and will not protect you as effectively as a non-werewolf player. Empty wolf paws strike harder and faster than those equipped with tools or weapons. So these two effects are no different from what we saw for version 112.2, but there was no secondary hunger in it. And this is another feature of the gameplay in this version. The more wild you are, the more secondary hunger rolls over you, that is, you will have to satisfy it more often. If you transform into a person, without satisfying your secondary or animal hunger before that. Then negative effects will be imposed on you weakness, hunger, and fatigue. And if you think that your secondary hunger accumulates exclusively when you are in animal form, then you are very mistaken. Even when you are human, the scale of animal hunger gradually empties. And if it becomes completely empty, then you will involuntarily transform, just as it happens on the night of the full moon. And also, for your information, you can now effectively satisfy your hunger with raw meat or rotten meat. Moreover, being both animal and in human form, rotten things will not impose negative effects on you. However, keep in mind that by eating raw meat, you sacrifice your humanity and your scale of savagery increases at the same time, you can safely eat fried meat without consequences. After the first infection, we start with 5,000 units of wildness, that is, far from the first stage, which would be logical in my opinion. The first stage starts from scratch and is designated as a puppy. If you find yourself at this stage of savagery, then only the usual howl, paw, and this is bright, which can be translated as a bright mind, will be available to you from the abilities, and thanks to him, we will accumulate experience faster, and also get insensitivity, like Anita. The paw property allows you to leave a certain slot empty. However, if the inventory is full, then an item will still appear in the paws. A normal howl is used to attract werewolves, and it is available in two modes, to attract wild werewolves, or to attract pack members. Having reached the numerical value of wildness, 2,500, you become a wolf. That's what your status at the second level is called. Having risen to it, you lose your puppy ability, a bright mind, but you get the ability to jump and climb walls. And in addition, a property available only at this level, which can be translated as a sturdy or a non-killer. With this property, you will be insensitive to being thrown back and falling from a height. You can fall even from the clouds, even higher, nothing will happen to you. But remember that this is only while you are in the form of a beast. You also run the risk of getting damage from a fall. If you have any armor on, your natural armor and wolf paws become stronger, as well as secondary hunger increases. Animals will run away from you in fear. The third stage of savagery manifests itself when you reach a value of 5,000 units. Having reached this stage, we lose the bonus of a strong man. Well, we acquire our arsenal of night vision and predator vision, as well as a special ability of rallying howl, which for a short time increases the stats of nearby members of your pack, including yourself. Thanks to this boost, the damage inflicted by your tribesmen increases, their speed increases, and the damage taken decreases. There is a rollback in the ability, which can be determined by the hunger scale. If it is red, it means that the effect of the abilities is valid at the moment. Orange the rollback time. Green you can use a boost. The secondary hunger is increasing again, and now the residents will run away from you in fear. At the fourth stage, that is, Having reached 7,500 units of savagery, we begin to be called a predator. We lose the ability to rally howl, but instead we get the skill of tracking by smell and the ability to crash into creatures at a run. This ability increases our sprint speed, and the creatures we encounter during the sprint will be thrown back and receive damage. This ability is also supposed to detonate creepers, but something didn't work out for me. Tracking by smell works more primitive than the versions for 112.2. Here, we have options only to track a certain mob or to track all similar ones. It is not possible to track down someone specific if you have not smelled it before. So the use of this ability is very limited. But if you smell one, for example, 
a zombie, you will see all the zombies in the area, and in this version, the ability is generally useful. To smell the mob, sit down and right-click on it with an empty paw. You will see that a red blurry spot has appeared around it and other similar mobs in a certain radius will be marked exactly the same. To cancel the sniff action, sit down and press the object ejection key. At the last fifth stage of Savagery, that is, having reached a maximum of 10,000 units, we will receive the title of Alpha. From now on, Few werewolves will dare to disobey us. We can challenge anyone. Along with the fifth level of Savagery, we lose the ability to crash from a running start, but gain the ability to grab and throw creatures. This ability works exactly the same as in the version 4.1.12.2, so there is no point in dwelling on it. We also have regeneration, and besides, the rage inherent only in alphas. In a state of rage, the berserk effect is superimposed on us, which allows the werewolf to become even stronger. But it will have to pay for it with clarity of mind. At the same time, the screen will be covered with red. All equipment that was put on the wolf in this condition, as well as any items in the paws, will be thrown away. The berserker state will last about two minutes. The duration can be increased by killing. The more a werewolf kills, the stronger it becomes. The negative side of this effect is that you will not be able to transform back into a person until the effect ends. Hunger will manifest itself with superhuman speed, and food will satisfy it very little. Since you can't hold anything in your paws, hunger will be satisfied solely by killing mostly neutral mobs. If hunger drops to too low a level, you will partially lose control, and the beast will seize control of movement and actions. It looks like this. Monster animals that get in your way will die against your will. The beast will make a dash in their direction, and you may not immediately understand how it happened and why the mob suddenly died. I strongly recommend not to approach your pets in this condition. To speed up the return to normal, hold down the item ejection key. The screen will be covered with green color, and when the berserk effect stops, the color of the screen will return to normal, and you will be able to pick up objects again. Well, now let's look at the items that are added to the Mod Moon for the Minicraft version 1.7.10. First of all, this is of course the Monkshood Flower, which you will find everywhere in the world. If for some reason, it didn't seem enough to you, but you need it in marketable quantities, then just use bone meal on the flower, and it will multiply. This flower is needed in crafts. First of all, it is used to create werewolf convicts. There are three types of prisoners available to us in total. Aconite potion cures werewolves. Craft it like this. We need a bubble, a pickled spider eye, a drop of gold, and three monkshood flowers. In general, all these potions are crafted in the usual way, without using a cooking rack, which in my opinion is an omission. If you drink an aconite potion, you will cease to be a werewolf. If you drink without being a werewolf, you will get immunity against the werewolf infection. If you drink again, the immunity is removed. The potion is poisonous, so drinking it will get poisoning. The calming potion removes 125 units from the scale of savagery. So, if you don't want to be a werewolf of the fifth level, but, for example, you want to get buns of the second, then this potion will help you. If a person is infected, but has not yet turned into a werewolf, then this potion will heal the infection. It's being crafted like this. We need a bubble, a monkshood flower, and sugar. A potion of savagery. Craft bubble, spider, eye and monkshood. This potion increases wildness. That is, by drinking such potions, you will pump your alpha coolness faster. If it is used on an ordinary wolf, it will turn into a dire wolf. In addition to convicts, there are also soothing tonics and wildness. These things are not craftable. At least I did not find their crafting. But they can sometimes be bought from werewolves, provided that you have a good relationship with them. Such tonics raise or lower your wildness scale by a whole level at once. That is, by 2,500 units. However, they are usually quite expensive. In addition to potions and tonics, 
The mod adds something like amulets and amulets to us. But these things do not need to be carried with you or on yourself. They are installed in certain places and have certain effects, which I will tell you about in more detail now. So, werewolf amulets, as it is written in the book, impose positive effects on werewolves, but only on those who are able to create these amulets. They have no influence on the wild ones, even if they are tamed, vicious part of the pack. That is, in other words, it is implied that the amulets act exclusively on the players. There are three types of amulets soothing, awakening wildness and saturating. Amulets are suspended from the ceiling. Their radius of action is eight blocks, and they consist of the base and the amulet itself. First, you need to craft the base. This is done with gold, thread, glass and paper. We get this kind of thing. Now we need to decide what effect we want to achieve. If we want to gradually increase our wildness, then we combine the amulet with a potion of wildness. If we need to get rid of an excessively feral state on the contrary, then we need to combine it with a soothing potion. And it should be exactly a potion and in no case a tonic. If you try to combine the base with a tonic, then you simply will not succeed. When you hang this thing up, it will gradually increase or decrease your wildness, depending on what you have charged it with there. Well, as I mentioned, you can also make a saturation amulet. The book says that it will gradually reduce your secondary hunger, as well as saturate the usual one. That is, being within the radius of such an amulet, you, in theory, should gradually heal. I checked this case, and the scale of animal hunger is really being restored. But I didn't find any effect on the usual saturation, so the supposed healing didn't work out. However, it is possible to saturate the beast quickly enough, and I think this is already not bad. And yes, by the way, amulets affect you regardless of whether you are in animal form, or in human form. The amulet base itself does not have to be crafted at all. It comes across in some dwellings of werewolf residents, where it can simply be removed and taken for yourself. At home, or wherever you want, you can easily hang two non-conflicting amulets next to each other, for example, saturation and wildness, or saturation and calm. In addition to amulets for werewolves, the mod also offers us something against werewolves, namely amulets. Just like amulets, Amulets do not need to be carried with you, but unlike amulets, amulets are not suspended, but installed on the floor. They are a kind of stick, sticking out of the ground, with a knob at the end. As with amulets, the protective radius of action is eight blocks. In addition, they have three modes. When switched, the amulet will affect either mobs, or players, or all at once. These modes are switched in the amulet interface, but werewolves cannot enter it if they have turned into a beast. The amulet is also being crafted in two steps. First, you need to create a base firm behind the kenite, sticks, glass and paper. Then different pieces are added to this base, depending on what effect you need to achieve. In general, there are three types of amulets, driving away, slowing down and weakening. To create a ward off charm, you need to connect the base with a kenite potion. In this form, the amulet repels werewolves. You see, I'm setting up a charm, and in the shape of a werewolf, I can't get close to it. For a slowing charm, we will need to add sugar, pickled spiders, I add a hellish growth to the base. Such a talisman imposes the effect of slowness of the second level on werewolves in the guise of a beast. Well, the weakening amulet is crafted by adding fire powder, a hellish growth, and a pickled eye, and this thing imposes a second level weakness on the shifters. Both amulets and amulets can be additionally provided with light dust or rodent dust. If you charge the light dust, then the amulet or amulet will emit light, but the red dust in theory gives a rest and signal to the block to which the device is attached, respectively for the block above the amulet and for the block under the amulet. At least that's what it says in the manual but in fact I didn't succeed. It looks like another flaw. The book also mentions claws as a weapon for werewolves, which they can use without penalty, unlike all other weapons. But there are no claws in the fashion tab, and there is no description of what to craft them from in the book. There are true fangs, 
but again, I have not found a use for them. I suspect the author of the mod had some idea to implement this, but he did not implement it. If you know something about this, write in the comments under the video. I'm really terribly curious. And now, I want to express my personal opinion about fashion. To be honest, I do not know which version I like more, the 14 Minicraft 112 2 or the 141710. In the 12th, Hunters, the dimension of werewolves, and the shape of a huge beast are added, which is just unrealistically cool. On the other hand, in the 7th, there is an opportunity to put together a pack of both players and mobs. The werewolf mobs themselves are well designed, the individuality of each Pushka is just a dream of all Minicraft. In general, I think that each version has very cool features and has its drawbacks. I would like to take up this mod conscientiously and combine these two versions into one. And in a good way, I would also modify it so that it is fully combined with the vampirism mod. And we can say that universal Minicraft happiness has been achieved. And what do you think about this, my dear subscribers? How do you see the Havley Moan mod ideally? Be sure to share your opinion in the comments. And do not forget to give a Lakosik to your Runyashka. Click on the bell so as not to miss new videos. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then be sure to subscribe. See you soon, dear friends. Bye-bye.